Hey guys, this is John Garnell with the Dev Drop for November 2021. Uh, today's event, uh, Dev Drop, is really going to cover a new feature that we have coming out in Genesis Cloud. Uh, it's our Genesis Cloud AWS Event Bridge integration. And what this new feature does is it basically allows you to take events that were traditionally just published from our notification service and available on a WebSocket and actually have those events be passed over to Amazon's event bridge, where you can then go out and process them using various Amazon technologies to process those events. You know, uh, event coming in from Genesis Cloud to Amazon can be processed by a Lambda, by S3, any number of targets. So uh, this diagram below kind of shows us uh, internally, we've always used Kafka to publish our events, like our conversation events our presence events on and so forth. And our notification service event uh, previously would only publish to a WebSocket. And I'm not gonna go into a lot of details on it. That uh, integration with the WebSocket will still remain in place. But now with the AWS EventBridge in, uh, integration, you can now choose to set up this service also uh, publish to an AWS EventBridge for processing. So what, are, what makes AWS EventBridge uh, attractive here as an integration uh, tool and event-driven architecture uh, tool. Uh, one, it's basically a message bus as a service. Uh, message buses allow any number of sources to publish to the message bus without knowing who's going to consume them. Message buses typically provide very strong message uh, filtering and routing capabilities that allow you to kind of direct what messages a particular target system is going to listen to. And message buses allow you to hook up new targets so that if there's a new piece of functionality that comes in that wants to listen to that same event, you could still listen to it. And that's pretty much what Amazon's event bridge allows us to do. It's a message bus as a service. You configure it in Genesis Cloud, you configure it in Amazon, and away you go. So let's go ahead and just hop right into it. And I'm gonna walk you guys through first on how to set this up in Genesis Cloud. So I'm gonna come out here to Genesis Cloud. We're gonna start in the admin section. And since this is still a beta um, product, in order to use it, you have to talk with Becky Powell, our product manager, and I'll include her email in the video description. You contact Becky, Becky will go ahead and add you into the beta product list, and then it, the, this particular integration will be available to your org. However, we are literally weeks away from this going GA. So if you're seeing this video much later, Keep an eye out, double check on the forum, double check on the blog post because you might be able to just use the integration without having to have uh, uh, Becky uh, add you to anything special. So if we go out to the admin UI, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click on integrations and I'm gonna go and add a new integration. And I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna install the AWS event bridge. And in doing so, I am gonna to have to set up four pieces of configuration information. Now it's important to note that you can actually have multiple event bridge, is, uh, event bridge installations or integrations installed in the same Genesis Cloud organization. They can go to different uh, target AWS orgs, regions. Um, so that's gonna play into some of our configuration. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is set up an AW, our AWS account ID that we want to have Genesis Cloud publish the event bridge to, uh, event bridge messages to. So I'm gonna set up one of my AWS account IDs and you also have to tell it what region that account is located in. Finally, we have to give it an event source suffix. Now, when we go over into Amazon, you can see what are called partner event buses. And this suffix helps you identify if you have multiple integrations uh, event buses available from Genesis Cloud. So we're basically gonna go out, we're gonna set up a, um, a suffix and then we're gonna select topic. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go look for an analytics event. And I think I wanna look at Q observations. Q observations basically occur when anything, uh, it's a metric event that occurs when anything happens with a Q. Either a new member gets added or removed like an agent or new messages come in, uh, a Q observation metrics will be published. So we're gonna go ahead and just look at that. So we're gonna save that. And I'd like you to note that you can actually have multiple filters out here. We're just filtering on one particular observation that we wanna look at. Okay, so now we're gonna go out and we're gonna save. 
And the last thing we've got to do is make sure we activate that integration. So we're going to go ahead and change that status to yes. Now I'm going to come over here to my Amazon console. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Lambda. So I'm going to go to the main console. I'm going to create a Lambda that's going to actually go out and process this event. And I'm just going to go for now, I'm just going to go out and I'm going to add a logging event to my Lambda. So let's go ahead and create, oh, I already have one out there. I'm going to go ahead. It's called MyQ Observations. I had created it earlier. And what I'm going to do is you can see that I'm logging out this observation event, but I don't have anything attached to that Lambda. So that's the next thing I've got to do. I've got a Lambda out there. I've now got to add a trigger. And in this case, our trigger is going to be an event bus. So let's go out our event bridge uh, integration. So let's go out to event bridge. Now, if we're going to integrate with a partner event or a partner like Genesis Cloud in AWS Event Bridge, we have to go out and we have to first select Event Bus. And we have to go and create a partner event source. So we're going to go out here. And you can see that we already have a partner event source out here because when we were in Genesis Cloud and we said, hey, we're going to create a new event bridge with a particular suffix it automatically published that that um, event source was now available within your account. So now I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna say associate with event bus. And I'm gonna select my permissions. I'm gonna say it's gonna have on my organization and I'm gonna go here and just say associate. So now I have the event bus, I have the pipe set up and events were coming through it but there's no place where those events can go. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna actually go out and set up a rule. So I'm gonna go out to my rule section and I'm gonna select the event bus. I wanna go and set a rule up next to, all right? And then once I have a uh, get to the appropriate event bus, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna create my rule. So we're gonna just say my Q observation rules. I'm gonna go predefined pattern by service. I'm gonna select service partner. And then I am gonna select Genesis as my particular service partner. My bus auto, uh, automat my partner event bus automatically gets populated. And then I have to set the target of where I want those messages to go. So if you come over here to target, you can see that there's a wide different uh, number of targets out there that you can send to. In our case, we're shifting it, shipping it to a Lambda function and we can go up to five targets associated with one particular rule. So let's go out, let's go hook our Lambda up called MyQ observations and let's go ahead and create the rule. So now we have an event bus created that's listening to basically the pipe that's been created between Genesis Cloud and Amazon and we have a rule that will be fired every time we get an event message in here. So let's go out, I'm gonna go out to Genesis. And what I'm gonna end up doing is I am going to put myself on queue and off queue. That should trigger some events and that should then be passed over the pipe, over to Amazon, and then I'm gonna log them out with my Lambda. So I'm gonna do this a couple of times just to make sure we've got some events going. And then I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look at my Lambda's logs by going to Lambda. Clicking on MyQ observations, let's go ahead and look at monitor, view logs and CloudWatch. And then you can see a log stream, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. And lo and behold, here are some metrics coming through. Let's go look at some of the details of this. So now you can see here in the details section of this message coming in into my Lambda, I've basically got under the detailed data section, all the data that would normally have come through uh, if I was just using it with the notification service in the WebSocket. So this is a really, really powerful concept. Now, one of the benefits of using AWS EventBridge is, is that you've got a much higher degree of durability than you do with uh, using notif the notification service with a WebSocket. If a WebSocket goes down, Genesis Cloud has no way of even knowing whether that WebSocket's ever gonna come back. And so it just throws away any messages that are created while that WebSocket is down. 
if AWS EventBridge is unavailable, Genesis Cloud will actually start queuing up messages and we'll keep them out there for four, uh, for four days and try to resend those messages over and over and over again. Plus, because this is all coming over a pipe into Genesis Cloud, you end up with a, a, the ability to scale up at a very high level with minimal amount of coding. So if you get a sudden burst of activity, you can set up your lambdas that are processing on the other end, receiving those messages to scale up a large number of lambdas to very quickly process them. This is a really, really powerful concept. So that wraps up the demo part of um, the presentation. I wanna come out here and I wanna show you where the documentation is for the uh, uh, AWS event bridge, plus the available topics and a couple other things that we can go ahead and look at that are interesting resources out there. First and foremost, if you go to the developer center uh, on Genesis Cloud, which is developer.genesis.cloud, you click on APIs, platform API, API resources, and then notifications, you can see the documentation for the Amazon EventBridge integration. I'll basically give you an overview of how to set up the configuration, what kind of events are supported. And if you look at the available topics page, you can see all of the topics that are available for the WebSocket, the EventBridge, or both. Now, we tried to keep parity as much as possible between our notification service WebSocket implementation and our notification EventBridge uh, event bridge implementation. However, the reality is that some of our newer messages, we wanted to make them only available on event bridge and some of our older implementations that are really kind of painful, particularly around conversations, details, uh, we're keeping them in the notification service WebSockets implementation for backwards compatibility, but we didn't want to bring them forward into event bridge. So if you go out here and you look at the available topics and in the transports, if the transport is WebSocket only, that means it's a message that's only available in the WebSocket. If it's WS Event Bridge, that means it's available both uh, on the Notification Service WebSocket or the Notification Service Event Bridge integration. And if it is Event Bridge only, it is only available on the Notification Service Event Bridge integration. Finally, I want to go out there and I want to show you a couple other resources that are available to you. If you go into blueprints, we have two blueprints out there currently with more blueprints on the way, uh, giving live examples of how to set up and configure event bridge with a Lambda and doing various activities. Uh, our first blueprint basically shows you how to hook up a pager duty incident in the event that OAuth uh, client is deleted. We, can, we actually demonstrate how to take that uh, OAuth client deletion event that comes across, have it fire off in a Lambda and then trigger a pager duty integration. And then we also have an example of being able to write user presence updates to a Dynamo database table. So I'd really encourage you to look through these. Uh, we give a pretty good uh, set of directions on how to install uh, these example pieces of code. Plus all this code is available in our GitHub repository. So you can pretty much pull it down, play with it, install it, do whatever you like. The last thing I want to show you is something that's very, very early in our beta stage, but it's something that we're really excited about is, as you know, we've been doing a lot of work with Terraform and our CXS code provider. And in our core uh, CXS code provider, you always had the ability to set up integrations and you could set them up very easily using the provider, but you kind of have to know how to set them up. Well, one of the things that we've been experimenting with is the idea of leveraging uh, CX's code and Terraform remote modules to give pre-packaged plugins that you can just use right within your Terraform code. So our, one of our very first modules that we're putting out there is an example of how to set up AWS event bridge uh, using it as a remote module. Now, normally if you wanted to set this up, you would have this in your local Terraform provider and you would have to basically provide this resource configuration right within Terraform and know how to set up and configure this, which can be kind of painful to figure out for an integration. However, with the remote module, we've exposed this in our GitHub repo. It's just like a standard Terraform remote module. You can actually just reference this particular module by a version number and then sit there and just provide parameters without having to understand all the kind of ugly gunk that goes underneath it. So guys, that's everything I've got. Uh, there's gonna be more details coming out. Please keep posted, uh, looking at our forums, looking at our blog posts, uh, because like I said, the AWS event bridge, it's coming, it's on its way. We're very excited about it. 
Uh, last few weeks are of the beta are here. If you still want to get in on the beta, please contact Becky Paul. Otherwise, it will be available in a few weeks. And uh, thanks, and I hope everybody has a, a great week, a great Thanksgiving holiday, and a good rest of the year. Thanks, everyone.